Hi folks, hope you're okay, it's good to be with you. I'd like to look at uh, John 19. Sorry, I've just been eating an Eccles cake. John uh, chapter 19. And I'm going to read it and ask the Lord to bless. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your forgiveness and your grace and your mercy and your love. And Father, as we read your word today, we pray that you bless it to our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. We're looking at John 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, Jesus forth, wearing a crown of thorns, the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him. Crucify him. And Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I know find no fault in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. And when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer, and said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou could have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivereth me unto thee hath greater sin. And from henceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place what is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called uh, the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him. And the two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also the court. Now the court was without seam woven from the top through the act throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They parted my garments among them, and for my vestures they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary Madeleine. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples, Standing by whom he loved, he said unto his brother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to his disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. And this Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon a hyssop, and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. 
The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brought the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brought not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came thereat blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he had said is true that you might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture said, They shall look on him the, whom they have pierced. After this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, But secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of mirth and aloes, about a hundred pound of weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in the linen cloth with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre wherein was never man yet laid. There lay they Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. So my website is jasonburnspreacher.com, 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 and you can go and look at Bible teaching, you can look at my Twitter and Facebook and um, engage with me there. And, find out about the Lord and the Bible uh, there. So, just pray, Father. I just thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and grace. And I just pray that those who hear this Bible study will be blessed. In your name and for your glory. Amen. Oh, I'm just a bit tired guys, so forgive me. So, the first point that I want to look at is the sovereignty of God. If you turn to Luke, um, Luke 23.20, Luke 23:20 it says Pilate therefore therefore willingly Pilate therefore willingly to release Jesus book again to them uh, Luke 23:22 and he said unto them a third time why what evil have he done i find no fault of death in him so if you read John 19:12 Acts 3:13 Matthew twenty seven nineteen. His wife comes to him, says, "Don't have anything to do with this guy." Uh, you can read John eighteen thirty one. Uh, Pilate sent Jesus to Herod in Luke twenty three verse seven. Um, he tried, but uh, Pilate tried to get them to choose Barabbas rather than Jesus. Uh, John eighteen thirty one to forty. So. We see, uh, we see uh, Pilate trying to get rid of Jesus, not wanting to judge him. But it was all in the counsel of God, and that's the sovereignty of God. Acts chapter 2, 23. Acts chapter 2, 23 him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God you have taken by the wicked hands and the crucified so they're saying that the crucifixion was planned of God and you could read Acts 4 27 and 28 so God is in control of everything even in the darkest period of history when the Son of God was being crucified it was in the will of God 
and God's will was not thwarted. Secondly, the Lord had false accusations. Uh, if you go back to, if you go to John nineteen seven, it says the Jews answered him, "We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God." So they they were bringing these accusations, and they they accused him in Matthew twenty six sixty one. John 18.30, uh, Luke 23.2 says he was trying to pervert the nation, uh, Luke 23.2 saying like he's forbidding tribute to Caesar, uh, so, excuse me, I'm just tired, I'm just really tired so forgive me, so there was these accusations against the Lord and you know, if you've been accused, just leave it with the Lord. Let the Lord deal with it. Uh, we can see in John 19 the meaning of the cross. Why did Jesus die? Well, we could go into a lot, but if you read Romans 3, 25, 26, it says that Jesus is a propitiation, meaning the appeasement of God's wrath. In Ephesians 5, 2, it says Jesus is our sacrifice. Philippians 2 8 it says that Jesus death was an obedience to the Father uh, Hebrews 9 14 says that Jesus death was an offering so Jesus death was a propitiation a sacrifice an offering it was a obedience and it was a substitution we turn to 1 Peter 3 18 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also had once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So, Jesus died for the unjust, though he was perfect himself. Hebrews 2.14 shows the devil was destroyed by the cross. Acts chapter 3.15 shows that men, when they killed him, it was a murder from man's perspective. So, that's just a few things of the meaning of the cross. It's a propitiation, Romans 3, 25, 26. It's a sacrifice, Ephesians 5, 2. It's an offering, 9, 14, Hebrews 9, 14. It's an act of obedience, Philippians 2, 8. It's substitution, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It destroys the devil, chapter, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. So... I think we'll finish there, I'm a bit tired, so just a few thoughts on John 19. We'll pray. We we'll pray that you bless. You bless. Lord, these few thoughts, Lord, about sovereignty, about accusations, and about uh, your word, Lord. We just come before you, Lord, in our weakness, in our frailty, and in our need of you, Lord. We just pray that you bless, Lord, for your glory. Bless this video. Bless the families represented in this video. For your glory and for your honour. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry I'm able to make a longer video. I'm just a bit tired. But there's some thoughts there for you to read in John chapter 19. I hope you're blessed by doing that. God bless you and take care.